Hey everyone, how are you doing today? Grab yourselves a drink, grab yourselves a snack because this is gonna be a not too long but definitely not a short video with my reading wrap up, all of my stats and goal wrap ups as well as the setting of goals for 2022. So without further ado, grab your drinks, grab your snacks and let's get breaking it down. I'm breaking this video into different sections. So the first section, we are going to look at my Goodreads for 2021. Then we have my personal goals that I set last year and see through my core pile where I track all of those and my journal and see if I hit all of them. And then finally, we'll be setting 2022's goals. So stick with me till the end to get some announcements regarding where I'm going forward next year with the channel. This year I set my goal at 30 books. I was going back into a full-time job. I thought, you know, that's like not even four books a month that I've got to hit. I surprised myself and I hit my Goodreads goal on the 30th of April. I know some people tend to readjust their goals accordingly. So if they've hit their goal, they'll adjust it. So if they've hit 30, they'll go, oh, well, I'll make it now 50. I prefer to not do that personally, mostly because I just, I don't want to adjust my goals and then end up getting to the end of the year and I've not hit the goal. I then feel like I failed, even though I actually did hit my goal. So I set my goal and I do not adjust it at all. So it means that as of today, which is the 28th of December, I am currently sitting on 67 out of 30, which is 223% of my Goodreads goal. I can't say that I'm not happy about that. So looking at my year in books on Goodreads, I have read 20,457 pages. My shortest book is Gudetama, Mindfulness for the Lazy, which was a very quick and cute graphic novel. And that was 48 pages. And way, way on the opposite side of that is my most pages read, which is the most pages I think I've ever read in any book. And that is The House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas, which is book one in the Crescent City series. That was 803 pages. The book that I read that is the most popular on Goodreads was Neil Gaiman's Norse Mythology. That 622,091 people have also shelved. And then my least popular is one that I added myself, which is a graphic novel that was self-published by a local manga artist to me called Hannah Rose and that was Nightshade Volume 1 and that has zero other people that have also shelved this book so if you haven't check out her thing her stuff I will link her below and order yourself a copy of the book so we can get her some more ratings because it is a great series and I've been having a lot of fun with it. According to this my average rating is 3.9 so that tells me I've had a pretty good reading year. The highest rated book on Goodreads is The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse and my first review of the year makes me kind of laugh because the first book that I reviewed was a, was a House of Earth and Blood so the first book that I read and reviewed in the year was also my longest book and is going to be taking part in the showdown which is my next final video which will be my um, end of year showdown book awards to discover who is my book of the year and that is very much in the running for book of the year. According to Goodreads I've had a really good year and I feel like I've had a really good year. So we're going to go on to part two, which are my other goals. So at the start of 2021, I, you may recall this spread in my bullet journal, which had my list of goals. So now we're just going to go through and what I'll do is I'll flash up charts and graphs from Core Pile to like talk you through. Last year was the very first year that I did like an analysis of my reading to that level and I realised that I actually had a very narrow kind of selection, so I did try to stretch out. First, for me, was to read 40% of books that feature BIPOC rep or are written by a BIPOC author. And looking here, 
I can see that I have achieved this. Almost 50% of my reads this year were by a BIPOC author. Next year I want to push even further with that, but we'll go into that soon. I was only at 23.9 last year, so you know, I've increased it by over 25%. My next goal was to read 30% of my books to have LGBT rep. I didn't have an exact stat for 2020 because this was something that was added into the core pile spreadsheet, but I am at, let's have a quick look. We have ended up on 43.9% of all of my reads have been LGBT which is fantastic. Again, I smashed that 30% target. And of those, breaking it down a little bit further, 24% was where there was just LGBT rep present anywhere in the book. And 19.7% was where a main character themselves was part of the LGBT community. So again, hit that target. Number three was to read 10% male authors because last year I realised I'd only read 9% of all of my books last year were written by a male. This year I managed to read 24.2% were written by male, 4.5% were written by non-binary and 69.7% were written by a woman. So I did increase that quite a lot, I over doubled it and I managed to start reading some more books actively by non-binary authors. Number four, no more than 70% fantasy. So you can see, fantasy this year is actually only 35.3%. So I have halved the number of fantasy that I have read this year. I've not done too bad on that one, actually. I think of all of them so far, that's probably been like the biggest goal that I've hit. Number five, I think this is gonna be the first one that I did not succeed, which was to read a minimum of one audiobook and one ebook a month. So if I very quickly turn to my year in statistics spread where I tracked this, I only did eight books with audio and I only did 11 books with ebooks. So I did not hit that target. Number six was to read five books that were recommended to me by friends. Now I don't actually know if I did hit this one, so I'm gonna very quickly scroll through my year in books and have a look and see which ones were recommended. Skullduggery Pleasant was recommended by my housemate. I think A Blade So Black was recommended by someone on YouTube. I'm going to count The Prison Healer because even though it was a fairy loop book, Mel convinced me to keep going and not DNF it. I think that's it, I only did three that were recommended to me by other people. So I failed on that one. Number seven was to finish three series. And I am fairly certain that I have done that. But again, I'm just gonna very quickly double check on my series tracker spread. And we have Simon Snow, The Confectioner's Guild, Fable. Oh, and The, uh, the Brown Sisters by Talia Hibbert. I started and finished that series this year. So I in fact finished four series. So yay, I only have like 20 more to go. Number eight, read more books with ADHD rep, which meant read any book with ADHD rep. I did do that. There was The Extraordinaries by TJ Klune, where the main character has ADHD. And then I also read a couple of books where it wasn't stated that the characters had it, but you could kind of tell. And then with um, Cemetery Boys, I contacted Aiden and they came back and were like, yes, this character does have it. So, it was fantastic, again, to see that rep. So I definitely did read a couple of books with ADHD rep. Number nine was to read more ARCs. I definitely did that. Last year I read six ARCs, something like that, maybe seven. In 2021, I have read 13. Number 10 was to read more graphic novels and manga. I think we can safely say that I've accomplished that. In 2020, I read four graphic novels and two manga. This year, in 2021, I have read nine graphic novels and nine manga. So I definitely hit that goal. And then I did have a little bonus one, but then I forgot to actually keep track. So my bonus was to read more books than I buy. And I'm pretty sure I can say that I did not do that. Actually, no. I think I did. 2020, I bought a ton of books. 
This year I did slow down on how many I bought because I wanted to read more. So I think I have succeeded in the bonus one. I'm pretty sure because I don't count books that people have bought for me. So yes, I did actually. I've only bought about 30 books this year only. Eight out of ten that I succeeded on, which considering how rough I've had it this year and how I've struggled this year, I actually am very happy with that. I'm surprised it's that high. I thought it was going to be a lot less. I thought I was going to read a lot more comfort books this year, but I didn't. I kept with it and I kept trying new things. So I'm very happy with that. First of all, we have my Goodreads goal. I've decided that as the last two years, I've been a bit cautious with my Goodreads and ended up smashing them. I'm actually going to set a challenge for myself and I'm setting the goal of 80 books. Considering this year my books have fluctuated greatly between two, between three books and 15 books, I'm hoping that it will spread out and I can make it a little bit more consistent. Then a couple of my goals are the same as last year. So that was last year's spread. Make sure it's on screen. This was last year's spread and then we have this year's spread and we have, so for next year I have 13 goals. Number one is to continue with the LGBT rep and read 40%. So this year I did hit over 40% so I want to keep that going. Number two is to increase my BIPOC reads to 50%. Number three is to read 10 arcs and really sort of make use of NetGalley and keep on it and keep on track. Four is two audiobooks a month and I'm not sure yet if I'm going to keep it at two or if I might lower it to one but currently it's two audiobooks a month. Number five, I need to read six fairy loot books because I am so good at getting them, putting them on my shelf and then six months later I lose interest or I sell them or I just don't get round to it. I think I've still got books from 2019 on my shelf. Uh, number six is the same as last year with this one. I want to finish another three series. Number seven, I want to read more non-fiction. So I've set the target of reading five self-development slash non-fiction books. Number eight, I want to read, continue reading more books with ADHD rep and um, I want to find more books that feature it. Number nine is a personal one, which is to have a monthly session reading sprints with my best friend Mel. Number 10 is to consistently use my uh, TBR game. So my heroic TBR, which I will link above. And when I am not doing a set readathon like the tropical reads or the reindeer readathon or the magical readathon, Whenever I'm not doing somebody else's, I will be doing my heroic TBR. Number 11 is to read five debut authors. When I was doing the Goodreads Book Awards, I think I'd only read like four books across every single category. So I want to be a little bit more consistent with trying out new books and especially new authors. Number 12 is to keep my Bookly and Goodreads updated because I don't want to get to December next year and have 40 book reviews to try and write in a week. I'm not saying that that's what happened to me, but that is what happened to me two years in a row. So I really want to try and keep up to date with those and keep my reviews updated. Number 13 is I want to read at least 10% of all of my books to be written by a non-binary author. Because again, I did it last year, or this year where I focused on reading more male authors and then I realised that now there's a little area that I need to do a bit more in and then just on the top of my head I'm going to add one final goal to round it up to 14. That doesn't really round anything up but I'm going to add one more goal just while I'm here as I'm going through my thing which is I want to read at least 25% of my books to be own voices because that's one of the lowest things that I've done this year and I want to improve on that statistic. So I want at least a quarter of my books to feature own voices. So that is my reading goals for next year.
let me know in the comments if you share any or if you have your own reading goals that you've set and what is your Goodreads goal let me know and then the final little thing for the channel what's going to be going ahead I listen to people and I see a lot on YouTube where uh, and on Twitter where people quite often will comment how they wish that there were more videos out there with like summaries and wrap-ups of books in series so that instead of having to reread the previous book they can just watch like a three to five minute video that explains what happened in the previous book in the series well that is one of the things that I want to do is I want to take series that I know are quite popular and ones that I'm up to date with and I want to do like little five minute recap videos so that is a series that I'm working on I will be working on a book review series as well that I'm calling Alphabetti Baghetti, which is a play on Alphabetti Spaghetti. And essentially it will be every other week I will just pick a book in alphabetical order that fits that letter. I will just choose a book and do a quick 10 minute, 5 to 10 minute review on it. And again, the reason that I'm not going to pick like recent updates or anything like that is because I want it to be just books that I personally love and want to recommend and you know maybe introduce you to a new author or a new book that you might not have heard before so that will be kickstarting in January I am considering taking my TBR game the My Hero at TBR I'm thinking about taking that further and doing a full month long readathon with like a My Hero Academia themed readathon but I'm not sure yet let me know in the comments if that's something that you'd be really interested in and then finally in regards to my journal videos because I don't want to not talk about those the aim will be to do for the first couple of months I'm just going to record my setups and show you what I've already done but then from spring onwards, I'm looking at doing actual live plan with me videos. So you guys can just sort of grab your supplies and we can all journal and plan everything together. And I also plan on doing a few more sort of journal setups and talk throughs and a few more bits about mental health and well-being, self-care and that kind of mindfulness. And as always, there will be a spattering of ADHD awareness videos in there and some resources that I'm hoping will help you and help me <laughs> as well and then the, my blog I do want to just plug that I am relaunching kbeth bookish so currently I've gone for the free option on wordpress but eventually I will buy a domain but I am at kbethbookish.wordpress.com and I will put a link in the description for you to just click on it'd be great if you could sign up check it out there will be some content that will be kind of like cross posted between the blog and YouTube but for the most part the blog will be book reviews, news, giveaways, things like that and then the very last thing is my shop which again I can't resist doing a little plug if you love characters, if you love books, if you want to be reading a book with the smell of your favourite character in the room then go and check out Character Sense where I create candles and concoctions from your favourite fandoms in stock right now I have a clearance going on of all of my Christmas characters so we have characters such as Rudolph and Christmas Town from Nightmare Before Christmas and Jack Skellington so you can make your room smell more Christmassy and I also have a bit of a sale going on until my birthday on all of my candles in stock so we have some from Outlander I have a few from Dark Shades of Magic and I also do custom orders, so if there is a character or a book series that you really want to see made, then let me know, or I'll get in touch and I can look at making them for you. I've just realised there was one more goal that I did want to just address, and a big thank you. My goal for this entire YouTube channel for the end of this year was to try and hit 100 subscribers. As I'm recording this, I just hit 200 and something it was like 200 I need to check let me check it was it was a lot it made me cry I have just in the last hour hit 260 and I am mind blown and I cannot thank you all enough for your love and your support and I really hope that you stick with me as I continue to grow and develop this channel and I really want to build like an actual community 
and I really hope that you are with me along for the ride. Again, thank you so, 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 so much from the bottom of my heart. You guys motivate me to do all these videos. You guys have helped me to get through some of the worst times of this year and I just cannot thank you enough. So y'all are amazing. I know I don't do American accents, I'm sorry. I apologize. I don't know what that was. But thank you so, so much. Have a wonderful end of 2021 and I will see you in a few days in 2022 where we can start to get some of these 2022 goals put in action. I hope you're good, hope you're staying safe and I will see you next year. Bye!